Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Dan. And today, as you can see, I'm going to be reviewing a documentary, which I haven't done in a while. And oh yeah, another thing I haven't done in a while is review a kaiju thing in a while. Which is which is a shame because I like talking about kaiju. I really do. So Okay, this is this is not like a new movie or anything. This is like quite old. It came out all the way back in 2005. Yeah, the early 2000s. Holy shit, this thing is old as fuck. So anyway, whatever. Uh, it's it has a giant monster thing. It has giant monsters and whatnot. So good enough for me, I guess. Whatever. So, it's the one title, Godzilla, it came from Japan. So, here we go. So, for this kind of thing, yeah, it pretty much trying to speak about horrors, the theories, and whatnot. Um, how it will influence people and whatnot. Like, for example, um, John Carpenter, he said he was inspired by this, but okay. Uh, this is, uh, it came from Japan for this specifically. It's supposed to be the fifth episode of the season of Animal Icons, I guess you can say. So there's that. And, um, okay. This was definitely a thing. Yeah, they pretty much was discussing, like, how a lot of people seem to be enjoying these films. And, uh, so yeah, it came out in 2005. So, of course, it's supposed to be this documentary. Uh, focusing on the history and Godzilla fandom for the Godzilla series. And um, it was pretty much filmed partially at G-Fest. Well, one of the G-Fests, anyway. One of them. Because, you know, there's quite a few of these, of course. So, yeah, there's, um, of course, works of, works of, I guess, of the staff, interviews, videos, you know, some comments and whatnot. Also, the documentary about the fact that this became, at least in the original series, one of the highest goals in the little films in the original series, and made it really popular. So, honestly, I thought it was a pretty bad movie, but whatever, I guess. So, okay. And obviously, there's other stuff that gets brought up in, this, in, these, in these segments of, like it talked about, it was like movies like the original King Kong from 1933 gets brought up. A Beast from 20,000 Fathoms from 1953. So, you know, stuff like this. Of course, Them, like one giant ant movie from 1954. You know, st stuff like this. Godzilla Rage Again, A Beast with uh, Miller and Eyes, and whatnot, from 1955. Rodan from 1956. Uh, you know, stuff like this. Gets brought up Mothra from, 19, from 1961 and whatnot. So, yeah, so okay. So yeah, they're trying to get uh, quite a few people for this documentary, and yeah, they really got quite a few people here. So that's pretty cool, and then we get to see that, you know, like I said, uh, these kind of interviews and whatnot get brought up on here and whatnot. There's a toy collector he gets brought up here, the actor, well, one of the actors anyway, right? and then um, some other actors get brought up as well that work in this series of films. Yeah, like I said, there's a toy collector as well, like I just mentioned. But yeah, it's it's pretty, it's pretty good. I, I liked what was done here, folks. And we get to see maybe some reactions from the fans and whatnot when they saw a certain film, I guess, of this series. And I guess the only thing I, I could criticize this, if anything, I feel like they don't get much... Uh, it's not as informative as I would like it to be. Not really. Hey, one thing I would definitely say is that if you start a trend and it's really popular, everybody and their grandmother is going to want a piece of that pie. And it definitely shows when it comes to this genre. And they get some details in there, of course. It's, it's, it's formative to some extent, yes, but I kind of feel like they don't dive right in too much into it, really. I don't know, maybe just me picking at it, but as a whole, it's fine, I guess. Yes, I realize before anyone says anything, yes, it's more of a me problem, if anything. But uh, the original Godzilla series, the Shore era, yeah, 
it's a very, very, very mixed bag for me. I just, um, it's wishy-washy. I know a lot of people, at least in America, have seen the bastard versions on the VHS tape. Assuming you didn't see them, you know, on the reruns on various programmings, different stations, way back when, during the 1970s, or even earlier, back in the 1960s, or maybe sometime in the early 2000s, where they had reruns as well. So, I don't know. People had the right to see the bastard versions. But this was around the time where... This was before Legendary Pictures had did, had did their, um, what do you call it, Monsterverse. So, as far as people were concerned, Godzilla Final Wars, which was released in 2005, this, this documentary was released a year after that. So, as far as people were concerned, Godzilla Final Wars was, it was done. It, it finished. So, there was, one, there was this one dude, uh, well, from what I remember, is that he stated that, there were, there were many reasons, many green reasons, because you don't get it, that they should continue the series. So people like him, I, mean, I don't remember the dude's name, but I remember what he said. But point being, like I just mentioned a moment ago, is that, yes, a lot of people were mentioning that, yeah, people felt that the Final Wars, again, was released in 2004, felt that, yeah, it was done. The other series is done. They, they, they're not going to make any more, that was it, because Toho had announced... It was, it was going to be like the end all be all. They, they just threw everything into the film. Final Wars, including the kitchen sink. So it was supposed to be one of those kinds of movies. It was like it was everything in a bag. Of, it was it was everything in a bag of chips. Well, at least it gave me an excuse to talk about something Japanese related, if that's what count for anything, I guess. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but you get the idea. Make the Godzilla franchise end with a bang, so to speak. So, yeah, this is another thing I would, of course, want to bring up because it's a giant monster thing related. I haven't reviewed a giant monster thing, I mean, excuse me, kaiju thing in a while, so let's just figure out to do this. And, um, yes, of course, they spoke about the hideous dubbing. Yeah, these films became notoriously known for the god awful dubbing. Yeah. And that's true. These films had some of the, what the English, or what I would call the bastard versions. The bastard versions of these movies had some, had some of the worst dubbing ever when it comes to foreign films. Holy hell, they were bad. Oh. Yeah, as I was saying, folks, a few moments ago, this was the program that brought this documentary up. And like I said earlier, too, is that movies like this were spoken about and this as well point being is that they try to give you a sense of the time period in cinema where those kinds of movies were all the craze they were all the trend it was very popular kind of a thing and yes even gamma showed up for like real brief well okay the original series anyway which was kind of annoying because they really glanced over a lot of his stuff when you think about it so, anyway yeah. but yeah getting distracted there but yeah, I like the movies, folks. But I do like these films, don't get me wrong. It's just the, the bastard versions. It just cringe. The bastard versions of these movies there's a, the bastard versions of these movies are just extremely cringe. A lot of the Japanese food is actually quite good as well, folks. So yeah, definitely a variety of stuff to eat. And yes, I do recommend this. I know I'm sidetracking here, but I, I'm just saying. One quick thing I want to say here is that, yeah, they had a one actor, him, in this uh, program of theirs for a good little while. And he, you know, did his best and brought in a lot of energy into these interviews, I guess. Ah, great. I can't already hear a lot of the toxic fans be like, Oh, how can they have a gay person in there? Not they ruin Godzilla forever. And, of course, I'm over here thinking, Knock, knock. Who's there? Fuck off. Well, anyway. As I said earlier, folks, yeah, this director said that he was inspired by these kinds of movies to do his own thing and whatnot. Again, wild, yes, I did enjoy this documentary. It was only like, what, an hour? I do understand there's, there's like only so much that can compact 
into one hour. I understand that, but uh, they primarily focused on the series of films from the 1960s and 1970s, which, yes, most people remember those films specifically. Yeah, just usually just because of the fact that they, those individuals just have fond memories of those, those old films specifically, with the bastard versions anyway. So, yeah, I'm calling the English dubbed versions the bastard versions, but a lot of people grew up with those and act like those are the only Godzilla films that really count. Give me a break. This does kind of annoy me in some ways because... If I'm going to be honest here, okay, I said this before, and I'll say it again. My favorite era of Godzilla would, of course, have to be, yeah, the Godzilla Heishi series. I really like these the most, aside from the first film, of course, but it got really glanced over. I mean, hell, even these series of films. I mean, I didn't care for it that much, but come on, they really glanced over some, you know, interesting behind-the-scenes stuff here. So anyway... Yes, my final thoughts would be that it's decent. But, yeah, these movies came out in an era of, I guess you can say, in cinema where, you know, these creatures that were born out of radiation were just all crazy. I guess you can say it was a, it was a, uh, a trend. They're just causing havoc and whatnot. So, okay. Anyway, I'll give this documentary an overall rating of a 6.7 out of 10. It gets a 6.7 out of 10 for me. As always, thanks for watching, and take care. Until next time, see ya. Oh yeah, later.